Hey, what's up? Jason here with Unity3D.College. Today I'm going to be reviewing a simple math game where you get problems and you have to find the solution and click on them. We're going to dive mostly into the code and just kind of run through how we can adjust it and clean it up to make it a little bit more extensible and a little cleaner. So if you look here, I've just started. It gives us a formula. We pick a number and if we get it right, it goes on to the next one. If I pick the wrong one, nothing happens. I assume there will be some message or something or some limits eventually but for now we just click it and um, yeah, we'll get the next one as soon as we get the problem right and it's actually set up so that it can generate slightly more difficult problems if we stop playing and take a quick look in the scene see there's a camera a plane a light there's a game object and then there's this cube for the formulas and here if I go to this you see this is where it's showing the actual um, formula I'm just gonna hit play and then switch over to the scene view so you can see kind of how the scene is all set up. So the scene is set up, we've got this object here, it's showing the current formula, and then all of these, and they're just getting uh, read by an, a click, essentially. And this could be switched over to use the UGUI system, but I don't think that's a, a big deal right now. Right now I really just want to focus on the code part instead. So let's stop playing, and let's open up the game script. And I think before I dive into too much, I do want to show the functionality that he's got in here for showing different levels of uh, difficulty. And that was, let's see, where was that? Somewhere in here, find formula. So if we pass in a different value up to four, we'll get different formulas. So if I hit F12, oops, wrong one. If I select this and hit F12 to go to it, you see here he's got some comments in here. Zero's addition all the way up to multiplication with subtraction and addition in there. Now if I hit play, we're gonna get just more complicated formulas. Oh, wait, I have to save first. If I save and hit play, then we'll get more complicated formulas. There we go, let's see. So now you see we got five times three plus two, so we're looking for 17, right? And then six minus four, we're looking for a two. And it doesn't matter, it's important to note that in this project, the way it's set up, if there are multiple things with the same answer, doesn't matter which one you click on which is great because you don't want to have to find the correct version of it there should just be a number of answers that are right and you pick the one that matches and you're good so let's stop now and take a look at this the first thing that really stands out is the fact that there are only two scripts right so that means that all of the game logic is in one spot which is in a simple simple game maybe you could get away with it but I'd still split this up and after looking at the code base it, it definitely could use a little bit of separation here now the block class is actually super simple too I'm gonna start there just because it's um ultra simple right? it doesn't have anything in it it's storing a block value I assume that this is just here so that um, you can view the value in the inspector but I don't think that it's necessary really so I just strip all of this out Give this a getter and a setter and just simplify here clean up that formatting control K then control D by the way cleans up that formatting so that our Our uh, brackets are all in the right place and on the right line and following the standards And if you need to view the value of this right? So if we hit play and the goal is just hey I want to be able to see the value if the text is wrong for some reason I mean right now the text updates so we kind of know the value but if you need to see it and it's not visible in here because it's not our field that's public or you marked with serialized. You can always switch to this debug mode and then you can view the backing value of any property that's just like an auto property like that. So let's switch back out and stop and then go back into the project, but this time we'll go into the game script. And now let's just take a real quick look at this thing, kind of go over what we've got. So there's a couple integers here that are private that are just for the tile size or the the number of tiles and the size of each tile so this is just for laying them out then there's some strings and integers for formula calculation uh, task number if I remember correctly going through this is actually finding a formula so it's like more of a formula index than a task number uh, there's a ray cast hit a task zero we'll talk about those in a moment and then some strings or lists of a list of strings and a list of integers I mean this is where all the formulas and the results of the formulas are getting shoved into got a reference to a tile game object 
and a couple other private game objects that are used. Uh, one of these is for the formula cube, it looks like, and the text on the formula cube. Um, we can clean that up a little too. And then, like I said, there's this part where we generate formulas. Is going to happen, well, I guess that's right here. So here we create a new list of strings and a new list of ints and then loop through the number of tiles. So it's eight by eight. So we're going to get 64 tiles here. And um, we, we get a formula or we use find formula. Then we add the formula that was found to this list. We add the result that was found to this list. Then a block is instantiated. The block value is set to the result. And um, this becomes, oh, this is setting the text of that block as well. So the block's text value gets set. Actually, that could, that's another spot where we can clean things up a little bit. Uh, we're almost done looking at the code and then I'm gonna go through and actually start cleaning some stuff up. So in update here, it's looking to see if it needs a new formula and then gets a new formula. And then here we check to see it looks like if we clicked on a block and if the thing that we clicked on matches the current one that we're trying to get, we remove it and destroy the object. And that's about it. And then there's this find formula method. So find formula first is, was the place that I went to kind of to clean stuff up first. This seems like a method that should be relatively stateless. It should just get us back a formula for a difficulty. It should be like a formula factory that, or a formula generator that's just generating formulas when we ask it for one and passing it back and really separate it out from our game. We should be able to swap these in and out or at least very easily be able to change it. Right now, I think it's a little bit of extra work in here if we wanted to modify the way formulas worked. And it's also just Kind of in the wrong class it, it should be in its own class so what i'd like to do first is just create a new class so i'm going to go down to the bottom of this game class and just create a new public static class and call it formula generator make sure i spell that right and then i'm going to take this formula method here this find formula just kind of collapse it hold it shift and end hit delete with shift to cut it and then paste it into this class. So now it's in its own separate class, but it has some errors. Uh, before we fix those though, I wanna make this public and static. This is gonna be a static, totally stateless method that gives us back a formula. So it's gonna need to return something back. Instead of returning void, I want to return a formula. Or I, I guess part of the problem here is, let's, let's look at find formula. So if we look at find formula, it's adding two things to two separate lists. And I really wanna simplify that down and get it one thing that has all of that data in a single list. So I wanna give this a return type. or And that return type can't just be a string or an int. If we were in a newer version of C Sharp, switch over to the experimental one or 2018, we could use a tuple for this. But I think here we'll just create a struct. So above this class, I'm just going to create a public struct and name it formula. And then I'll give it a public string, um, let's just call it formula, and a public int, um, let's call it result. So here's the, the formula, the text version of it. Um, I wonder if this should be like equation. Yeah, let's name it equation. So we have an equation and a result. I don't know if that really, the wording is perfect, but I, I, either way, having it as a separate struct is the way that I wanna go with this. Now I'm gonna make that the return type of the find formula method. So find formula will return back a formula with an equation and a result. Now let's kick some of these things over to their own file. Take formula, hit control period, move that type to its own file. We don't want that just sitting in here. And then I want to move this into its own class too, or its own file, the formula generator. But you see here, it's got references to a couple things that don't exist yet that are all defined up here in the top of this game class. So I'm going to take these three lines right here, cut them out, pull them down, and I'll just drop them into this method for now. We need to get rid of the private word because they're no longer in the class. 
they're in the uh, the method itself, so there's no private public to set there. Now I'm gonna clean up that formatting again, and we're a little bit closer, but we are now at a point where I can pull this class out into a file. So just hit Control Period, move it to another file. There we go, and save. And then I'm gonna go into that formula generator. So Control Comma brings up that go to all. And I'll just type formula generator and get that CS one right there. So to fix this up now, I just need my find formula to actually return back a formula. And the way I would do that is in this section right here, there's a simple switch for the difficulty. So zero, one, two, three, and four all return back a different type of formula. And what it was doing before was just filling out these values and then returning back a formula or um, using these as the formula. Now, we could just go to the end of this and just say return new formula, and then we can open up the auto property, or the uh, the property initializer here, and just set the value. So you just do equation equals current formula, comma, result equals current result. So we can do that, and this will work and send us back one except it's going to say hey these are not initialized we actually have to initialize these to string.empty and zero now while this works i'd like to just change it up a little bit more though and clean it a little bit and make these current formula and result actually be constructor parameters of the formula now this doesn't exist right now so saying hey it doesn't contain a constructor that takes two arguments, so I can just hit control period, generate that constructor, and then hit F12, and you'll see that it actually automatically kind of figured out what I was doing. Well, it tried at least, but it has the wrong variables here. It added in two new ones. I don't want those, so I'm gonna delete those. Um, and I wanna set the values that I already had. So I wanna take result, that'll be set to this current result, and equation will be set to that. And I'm also just gonna rename these variables here, give them a more consistent feel. So there we go, equation equals equation and result equals result. And then this keyword just says, hey, go use this one. And we don't need to call into the base constructor either. That constructor generation that did a lot of extra stuff we didn't really need. But now we're returning back a new formula. So we've got a separate class that generates formulas and just gives us back a formula for a difficulty. Now let's go back into the game and let's see, right here is where we're generating a formula. So let's say formula, formula equals find formula. And, oh, we need the formula generator dot find formula, because now we're calling into this separate static class. Again, this could be non-static and we could have multiple generators that we just pass in and can change out on the fly. Now, we could be able to totally adjust this quite a bit easier now because our formula calculation is pretty independent of our game. It's just gonna we're gonna get back a formula and then we're gonna use that for something. And we don't care where the formula comes from. Now we can't add our formula to this formulas list because it's a list of strings. So we're gonna change that. We'll change this to formula list of formulas, and we'll get rid of that results list completely. We don't need that anymore. Now I'm gonna clean up, let's see right here, get rid of 36, and we need to initialize this to a new list of formulas. And then here we can simply add our formula, right there, the resulting formula to this list of formulas, and delete that results call. And then let's see, the next section that we have to deal with is right here with this block instantiation. So if you look at it, it's instantiating this tile prefab, which is actually a game object uh, reference, and it's putting it at whatever the correct position is. That's all good. And then it's getting the block component and setting the value to the current result. Well, first fix is just change current result to be formula.result, because that's our current result now. And we can do that down here too, formula.result. But I'd like to clean this up just a little bit more because this can be smaller, a little bit more encapsulated. So let's go to our tile right here. This is defined as a game object. I'm gonna go back into the project view. 
select the game and if you look here this block it's just this right here it's got the block script on it we're really referencing the block script that seems to be the part that we care about so let's use block instead of game object here because if we put anything that's not a block in there everything's just going to break anyway so we may as well make it very explicit and i also like to just add in the word prefab here just to make sure that it's really obvious when people are looking at the code that this is a prefab. It's not an instance of the thing. It's the prefab that's being used to generate these. Oh, and I like to just mark that as private. It was private already by default, but I just like to put the word there so that everything matches. Makes it a little bit easier to read if everything's kind of the same, same format there. So let's go down here. Now when we instantiate the prefab, let's see, we get tile prefab. Uh, the error that we're seeing is that the var variable of this block right here, which is actually up here, um, is this referenced anywhere else? Let's do a quick check. So it's only referenced right in here. It doesn't need to have this, this wider scope. So I'm going to delete it from here. And I bet the same is true of text object. Yep. So we'll get rid of both of those from there. We really want to keep the things at the scope that they belong. And if they're not used across the class, which they're not, and they're only used in the method, they should just stay in the method. So here we just change this to var this block. In fact, what we could do is say block this block, because that's what we're going to get back since instantiate knows what the type is for this. It's going to give us back that type. Now we no longer need this get component call. We can just say this block dot block value equals formula dot result. So what about the text though? Well, we could just say var text object equals that and it'll all work. But I think in this case, the way that I'd like to clean this is to actually move some of this logic into the block itself. Let's make the block responsible for setting up its own text. So what I do is cut this got it all on the clipboard and then go into the block and here let's see well we just turned this into an auto property but I think we're gonna have to adjust that just a little bit so I think I'm gonna mark this as private and then I'm gonna make a public void set value and give it an integer named value and then I'll paste this in so we can get rid of that in fact Let's, let's take a quick look at our block. Block right here has a text mesh pro text, and that's the only child. So we can simplify this even more. So our text object is actually gonna be just get component in children, text mesh pro, just like that. And then we can just say, text value of that is equal to our value right here. And it really, this quotes plus value, this is just trying to force it into a string. Instead, we can clean that up even more and just do value dot to string. When you have quotes plus an integer, it combines them all into a single string. So it allows you to set it on this text mesh pro text. If you don't do that and you just try to set value like this, you get an error message saying, hey, I can't implicitly convert it, which is stupid, it should be able to, but whatever. We just give it the two string value and it works. Now we need to set the block value here too. So here we'll just say block value equals value. So now we can no longer set block value from outside the block, which I think is good, except if we do it using this set value method, which is responsible for doing more than just setting it. If we're just setting it and not doing anything else, a getter with public setter, totally fine. In this case, though, we need to do some other things. So I want to restrict it and make sure that it can only be used the correct way. If this was still set to public, it'd be possible to accidentally change this and not update the text. Now, not really possible. So let's hit F6, build, and see our error message. You should see an error from when we try to set block value at the very least. Yep, right here. So what we'll do here is just say this block dot set value and pass in the formula result. All right, now I think we have a couple other little error messages, but we're almost done refactoring to the point where it'll at least play. So let's see, the next section I wanna take a look at is in update. So this is checking to see if they clicked on, 
Wait, if correct block was hit or at start, get new formula from list. So this is saying, hey, if we don't have a formula, try to get a new formula or try to pick one. It's not generating them, it's picking from the existing ones because all those existing ones are already done at start. So here we're just choosing a random one. So I want to adjust this a little bit. Let's see what task zero really is. Task zero is not a great variable name. Like we don't know what that means just by looking at it. And ideally you want all the variable names to be very obvious and be able to read it and go, I know exactly what that is just by the name. So let's take a look. Task zero gets set to a formula and this used to be a string. So this was actually setting it to a string of the formula. So I think what we'll do is just rename this, hit F2 to rename. I'll call this current equation. So that's what we named the equation part of the formula. And we'll set it to formulas.task no, which I assume is task number, dot equation. Now I'm gonna rename this as well. Well, let's see. Yeah, let's rename this. So this is gonna be the current formula index. So I'm gonna rename that to current formula index. It's just the index zero based of the formula that we're currently working on. So here you see we're just picking a random formula and then setting the equation. Yeah, cool. And then here we're setting the text as well. So let's extract this little chunk of code out. So I'm gonna select this little area and hit control period, hit enter to extract a method and I'll name this like choose new formula. There we go. So if we should pick a new formula, we choose a new formula. And here, let's even do this part. Let's take this control period, extract method, should choose new formula. And then I can take this comment right here, delete it, and I'll just put it right up into this, into this method. So if anybody's curious how it got there, whatever, it's right here. I'll probably update the comment too, but I'm going to skip that step for now. So now we've got this a little bit easier to tell what's going on in update. If we should choose a new formula, we choose a new formula. And then um, we check to see if the mouse is down. So if they clicked, then we do a ray cast and we look to see if the collider's name is block one clone. So that's going to be because of this, it's naming it block one and it's putting clone after it because it's instantiated that way. And this is, um, I'd say a very bad way to look at objects and find out what they are because names change, people rename things. And if your code is bound to a string name of something, it's very easy to break things in the future, especially if you have multiple people working on things. Somebody goes through and starts cleaning them up like, hey, block one's not a good name, I'm gonna fix that. And then all your code breaks because it's looking at them by this string name. So instead, what I like to do here is get a block component. So we'll just do, block block equals hit dot get oh hit dot collider I can get my words in there dot get component block so this is going to look for the block component on the thing that was hit if it's not there if there isn't one block will be null so what I can do now is just say if block not equal to null then do this because now we know we've done it and now Let's see, I can actually get rid of this whole check because we we're already getting that component. So we don't need to do it twice. So here we just say if block dot block value is equal to results. Where's results coming from? Oh, results does not exist. That's right. Results was replaced by formulas dot result. So remember we took that set of two lists and combined it into a single list of structs and that struct has the same index just like the list did but now we have a result as part of it. So if that's the case then we count it as a hit and we do all this stuff. Now we want to delete the results remove because we're not using that and the other thing I want to do is change this destroy immediate to just a destroy. Uh, destroy immediate is usually used for editor type stuff, a couple very specific use cases. You don't want to use it in just general stuff. As you, It's use destroy. <laughs> it's a basic thing. You just want to go with destroy unless you have a very specific need for destroy immediate. And uh, actually we can simplify this out a little bit. So here we have an if check and another if check against the same thing. 
I can take all of that right there, hit delete, oops, add double ampersand and fix my B and get rid of one of those. Then control K, control D to clean that up. And now we've got a slightly smaller, a little bit easier to read thing, I think. So here we check to see if we have a block and that block's value matches the current one. Then remove it and we clear out our current equation. I think we're good. So it's already, here, let's remove the extra using statement. Get rid of some of that extra white space. And let's see, do we have anything else? Ah, smash your space here. Okay, yeah, let's just try this. So I think we've got everything kind of working and a bit cleaner so far. Oh, we have an error though. So this error, I know exactly what it is. If we go to the game, since we changed the type on the tile prefab, even renamed that field, we just need to reassign it. So I'm just gonna drop in the block. There we go. And play one more time and we should get it. So now we've got two times seven plus 10. So where are you? 24, there we go, bam. So you can see it still works. Everything's you know, in there and going, but I think that the code personally is a little bit cleaner. Now there's some more that could be done. Like I said, I think I would eventually split out that equation part, the equation generator or formula generator into some sort of a factory where you can just create new formula generators and just kind of have those be in there and automatically detected. In fact, that'd be a cool use of reflection too. So you could just have a formula generator that does all kinds of different formulas and have them all in their own separate little class that just you know, can be added in. People want to add in new formulas, they just drop them in and then assign a difficulty value or something like that. Um, one other thing that would be cool on this one, where's that difficulty value? Um, that's right. Where, where'd it go? It's in star, oh, right here. Find formula four. So here I just add like a difficulty and then generate that as a field and make it serialized so we can see it in the inspector. Then we can at least play with the, the difficulty. Now, of course, the difficulty is probably not gonna be set just in the inspector. It'll probably be from some game flow. You, know, you pick levels and it goes through and stuff. But just to make it easier for myself, I thought it was cool to just pull that out. And the last thing I want to do is just move these serialized fields up to the top. So I always personally prefer to keep all of the things grouped up by what they are. So if they're private fields that are serialized for the inspector, put those all the way at the top, then followed by my private fields that are not in the inspector, and then cached stuff, public fields, and so on. So I think we're good. Oh, let's add the private word here too, just so stuff lines up. So yeah, anyway, I think we're good on this. Um, I, I could keep going on this project for a while. There's a lot of cool things that we could add in, but I think cleaning up the code was the most important part. Ah, I'd probably clean this up too. Again, find gameobject.find and finding by a name is very, it's just brittle, it's fragile. It'll fall apart the second somebody renames something. So I, I probably wouldn't do this. I'd just do a find object of type or something else or maybe an event callback that this thing listens to, to find the new the new one. But it's simple enough that I don't know if we need to dive that far into it. We really just need a reference to the text of that object. Right? This whole thing is just to get this. Yeah, let's just clean that up. Let's do this. So let's rename this to formula text. And we're gonna change this to a text mesh pro. Remember, it's not using the UI system, so it's not the UGUI one, just the text mesh pro. And here, let's see, where's the formula cube? Got this. Just wanna look and see if there's any kind of a script on it. So there's absolutely nothing. So instead of adding a script onto this one, I think what we'll do is just delete this, delete that, delete that delete that and add a serialized field attribute here and just move this up and copy that and then wherever that's used oh it's just used right here and choose new formula um, 
Oh, yeah, let's... We also don't need this extra quotes. It's just adding a string, and we don't need the get component part because we already are the component. So now it's just formula text dot text equals current equation. Yeah, that's good. And we can go into the editor and just find our game. It's going to have a field on it for the text object for this uh, formula text, and we just assign it right here. Save, hit play, and we should be good. Just a little bit less code. Less code's almost always the way to go. Minimizing stuff. Less room for errors. Cool. So there we go. That's good. Um, I'm going to end this here. But if you have questions or other suggestions for things that I missed or just questions about why stuff was done, feel free to drop a comment below. Also, if you have uh, projects of your own that you just want to have reviewed, I plan on just continuing to do this at a pretty regular interval. So feel free to just uh, submit them. If you're on my email list, just go over to unity3d.college, just a little opt-in thing at the top. If you're in there, just reply to any of those emails with your code and um, or ideally a project that works where I can put it, pull it up, play it, see what it's doing and see how it's supposed to work. It just makes it a lot easier to review and for I think other people to understand it. But yeah, go ahead and do that. Send me your project and um, if, if I, as soon as I get around to it, I'll do a review of yours as well. All right, um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share with all your friends and all that stuff, and have a great weekend.